the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 151 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by my side, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you again. Second time in a row, isn't it? We've been next to each other. Getting (laughs) cosy. Yeah, no, it's good to be uh, back out in the real world now and, uh, you know, back recording live. And uh, we have a great episode today. We've actually got two guests today. Okay. So uh, the topic of our conversation today is all around franchising. Mm -hmm. So this sits firmly within our seven pillars, specifically pillar number five, uh, the business pillar. And uh, we've invited the CEO and founder of Platinum Wave Franchising, Susie McCafferty. Award-winning. Oh, Susie's a a true expert in her field of uh, knowledge when it comes to franchising, and that will shine through in today's conversation. fair enough. Yeah. And we've also got one of our members, Mm -hmm. so uh, Academy member Eddie Ray, who's recently joined, and uh, he's got experience of turning his business into a franchise model. So really hearing how that's worked out for him. So we're hearing it from both sides of the coin then. Flip one side, you're getting to understand if you're an existing business owner, how you could potentially turn that into a franchise opportunity. On the flip side, not everybody wants to create a business. Not not everybody's capable of creating a business. And we know franchising is a very popular method for those who are used to employment, looking to transition into being an entrepreneur. But perhaps want to copy a format. So that is the the name for often used for franchising called business format franchising. In other words, the systems, the processes, the marketing, you know, the entire methodology is done for you so that you can plug and play. And as long as you're doing the right research, it's the right thing that suits your style, your wealth dynamic, It could be an absolutely brilliant way of transitioning and being able to sack your boss, Chris, (laughs) and escape the rat race and do all those wonderful things that we know our employed members often are trying to do. Yeah. So there's lots of ideas. We really hope you're going to enjoy listening to these two interviews. And uh, we'll be back afterwards with the debrief. Susie, warm welcome to Wealth Talk today. Hi, Christian. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on with us. And um, Susie, uh, we actually kind of connected, not directly, but through one of your uh, team members at the recent BizX event, uh, where there were over, you know, 1500 business owners. And uh, that was run by Action Coach. That was a fantastic event. And, um, you know, we got chatting there and um, it was just so fascinating to discuss the, the, uh, you know, the possibilities for a business owner to start franchising and looking at that model. And, uh, you know, then we had a chat and we thought we have to get you on Wealth Talk to, to tell our listeners a bit more about this. Oh, wonderful. Well, I always love chatting about all things franchising as anybody that knows me knows only too well. So I'm delighted to be here today. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you come with some experience, right? I believe over 20 years worth of franchising experience behind you. Yeah, I started in the wonderful world of franchising at the tender age of 23 um, and um, never did I ever think I would build what went on to be these multi-million pound businesses through this thing called franchising. So looking forward to chatting more about that with you today. Yeah, and you're the CEO and the founder of Platinum Wave, which is the largest independent franchise consultancy, I believe. So, um, you know, tell us, tell us a little bit about what you do at Platinum Wave to, to begin with. Yeah, so we're um, accredited by the British Franchise Association and what we do is we help businesses of all sizes, literally all sizes from corporates to small companies looking to scale up in all kinds of sectors, you know, food, retail, professional services, beauty, leisure, education, children's activities, you name it, um, really scale up their businesses, realise their brand potential and value through the vehicle of franchising. So really helping businesses who are serious about growth, who are already a proven and profitable concept, um, grow basically and expand through franchising. 
Yeah. And I'm sure there's so many benefits for mm. a business owner to do that. Obviously at Wealth Builders, we talk about the ability to create kind of sustainable, predictable, recurring income in your business. And I'm right. sure by, you know, franchising and having those, you know, those franchisee fees, that's one recurring income stream that obviously is is a reliable stream. Yeah, I mean, there's so many advantages to franchising your business. And I think one of the first things that people always say to me is, I'm not franchising, no way, no one can do it like me. Um, when actually I, I prove with my own businesses that I franchise over the years that if you set up really good systems and procedures and provide really good training and support and really provide a, a culture of collaboration, then you can actually have franchisees outperform anything you ever did yourself. Um, so it's a really powerful growth um, tool, but franchising has got to be a win-win. Unless your franchisees make money and are happy and engaged and profitable, then you'll never become a good franchising company. Um, but by the means you know, of setting up a franchising company, how you do generate this additional income and build this additional wealth is selling franchises on a local level um, you know direct to fran individual franchisees where you would um, attract initial franchise fees and then uh, these ongoing royalty fees management fees which are typically a percentage of the franchisees turnover but that is when you're just doing single territory franchising to single franchisees when actually there's a massive culture of multi-unit development now here in the UK especially where people will be interested in developing multiple territories as opposed to just one but also where the real fun begins and where I realized my personal growth potential through franchising was international franchising when you start to be selling country licenses to entities or well well um, funded and experienced individuals to take your brand to their country and roll that out at serious scale um, under a master franchise or area developer model so and yeah. um, lots of growth potential through franchising yeah and I can see that it makes so much sense to do that because mm -hmm. if you don't have that local knowledge of other territories and the yeah. connections and all the other things that go with that, you're tapping into that experience through the franchising model there. Yeah, I mean, when I went international, that was case in point. And, um, you know, I developed into Dominican Republic, Kuwait, um, you know, into Portugal and Spain. Um, I didn't speak the languages in most of these countries, let alone be able to manage my own corporately owned development there on a daily basis. So having partners who were out there, who were fully immersed in the market, who were experienced at either rolling out other franchise brands or other businesses and brands, um, that was a really powerful way to grow my business out there. Yeah. And when we spoke the other day, Susie, you told me this is now estimated to be a 20 billion pound industry or is that dollar industry? And that's a, that's a, a 20 billion pound industry in the wow. next sort of couple of years. I think it's sitting at about 17.2 billion at the moment. So yeah. um, and that's that's just, you know, it just shows you the, the power of franchising, but how wildly underestimated it is as a growth strategy. You know, I'm I'm always talking to people about franchising and, you know, my last 23 years of industry experience, you know, the last 10 years in the UK especially is really where I've seen franchising actually coming into its own. And, um, you know, it's it's not got the reputation that it potentially has before. And um, you're seeing lots of good brands making really good um, success of franchising here. But really interestingly, in the last sort of couple of years, we're seeing a lot of international brands now coming into the UK, um, which is really exciting. Big brand names, your Wendy's, your Ben & Jerry's, your, you know, uh, big, big restaurant and quick service restaurant brands and more. So um, it's certainly an industry that's that's there, alive and kicking um, with plenty of um, growth potential. And I think the other thing we're noticing more and more is, you know, in terms of, the people who are buying a franchise and investing into a franchise. I think the last study that was done by the Nat West Bank and the British Franchise Association, massive um, percentage of those that were actually buying franchises are coming from employment. So this is people who are sick of the rat race, sick of being restructured, at risk of redundancy again. Um, and they're really looking at ways to get into a new industry, but pretty fast, um, where they've then got you know the support on an ongoing basis. So you know we help people find franchises through what we do at Platinum Wave. And it's amazing to see the, 
the, the, the vehicle to help people change their life, um, you know, in terms of work-life balance, financial um, wealth, and all these types of things that come with it. Yeah, because we know building a business isn't easy, right? If you're starting from scratch, especially if you're coming out of employment and perhaps you've always had that team, that network, that structure around you, and then suddenly you turn into the entrepreneur who has to wear all the hats and have all of these skills suddenly, and and that's tough, and that's probably why the the rate of business failure is, is high in the UK. But, you know, when you're buying into a franchise, you've already got that support system, you've got that structure. So, you know, tell us about... What does that process look like for someone who's maybe listening now? Maybe, as you say, they're in the rat race. They just yeah. literally, you know, really want to have something that they have more control over. How yeah. would they come to you? And, and what's the general kind of, you know, process and time frame for someone to, to assess the different opportunities and then to be able to actually get going? Yeah, so it can be quite a journey for a lot of people. You know, it's not it's not a, normally an instant decision of I need to leave and I want to buy a franchise in this sector. Quite often, and um, what we do at Platinum Wave is help people figure out what that next step looks like. We had a great case study recently, which was my little sister, believe it or not, um, working for twenty odd years for one of the major banks, um, had a bit of a um, an illness, and I've gone back and decided that actually she should be doing something else that gave her greater work life balance and had no idea as a business analyst what she was going to be doing um, in terms of her next career and her next project whatever as it happened we worked through her passions her likes her dislikes her um you know um uh, her earnings expectations and all these things and she's now gone into a home design franchise which satisfies her passion for interior design but also potentially provides the re- return on investment that she's looking for so that that's just one story and you know we had another great success story um, at the start of the year when somebody had bought a franchise um, a courier franchise 10 years ago for £25,000 had come from a completely different background, didn't know anything about um, courier uh, franchises or anything like that. Um, we helped them sell that 10 years later. Um, 10 years later, they sold that for just over a million pounds. And that's a 3,000 odd percent return for somebody who got into an industry that was completely new. Um, so that's given them, for this particular person, um, their retirement, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. mentioned some numbers there. I mean, perhaps in the past, has there been a perception perhaps that it costs a lot of money to get into franchising and has that changed? Is there different ways of funding that now for people? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the rule of thumb is the, the higher the franchise fee, the higher the investment, the longer it takes to get a return but the higher that return potentially is. Um, so a lot of the food franchises, for example, you know, you buy into a franchise for fifteen, twenty thousand pounds, but your investment on fit out equipment, stock, working capital could be up to sort of three hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand. That return on investment, you'd be looking to make that back within sort of um, three and a half to four years kind of thing. But, you know, if you have a cluster of units like that, that's a, that's quite a substantial portfolio to be selling. Whereas um, there's people who are buying into things like children's activity franchises for £10,000. But actually, through working a part-time flexible model, you've still got the potential of some of these um uh, children's activity franchises to to turn a six figure sum with really good um, profits. So, um, but you can get that normally over a faster period. So, um, it's it's quite interesting, you know, in terms of the different opportunities that are out there and the different levels of investment that are there. But generally, people will sign a five year franchise agreement. So, you're looking for people to actually be you know making a turn on that business within sort of three years, making a profit within the first year to year and a half and and bringing home some decent profits within three years yeah and if people are looking at you know traditional sources of funding Mm -hmm. like going to speak to a bank I mean what how are they seeing the franchise model these days yeah so banks love franchising and I think I can talk on behalf of most of the major banks out there they've all got dedicated franchise teams so whether it be HSBC and NatWest, Lloyds and Barclays and you know they all have dedicated franchise divisions who will help um, 
fund franchise businesses. They tend to um, love franchise businesses because there's a higher success rate than businesses starting alone. And just referring back to that study I mentioned at the start that was run by the NatWest Bank and the BFA, British Franchise Association, when they actually surveyed um, the franchisees in the last survey, 90% of them reported as being profitable. That's a massive success rate compared to starting business alone, which again is one of the reasons why banks love franchising. So, um, you know, the banks will always look for you to have some skin in the game. They won't just fund 100%. And um, depending on the franchise, they'll lend higher amounts, you know, up to 75% or more. Um, but there is definitely support for this model out there to help. And obviously, if it's asset based or requires a fit out or equipment or vehicles, there's a whole range of alternative finance and um, you know, brokers and companies out there that also recognize franchising. Yeah. And in terms of your own wealth building, Susie, yeah. we talk about diversifying and I know that, you know, you're now setting up different companies. You're looking at different areas. You've obviously got mm -hmm. a background in recruitment as well. You've touched yeah. on that a little bit. So mm -hmm. tell us a bit more about how this, you know, has expanded now to help you start to generate recurring income streams from different areas. Yeah, so as I said before, I started my first business at 23 and never did I ever dream that I'd build these multi-million pounds through franchising. But actually, my first business was a cartridge refilling business, so not at all cool or sexy, but it was obviously a sector that had potential. Franchise that has about 70 franchises in six different countries by the time I was 30. I um, exited that at 30, and that gave me the means to then do it all over again. Um, so this time I did it with recruitment agencies, built that into about a 30 million network by the time I was 33 and sold that. That then gave me the means to go say, well, at 33, what do you want to do with your life? You know, you're, you're, you're too young to retire and all these things. So I decided to set up Platinum Way Franchising, which was now 12 years ago, as a vehicle to help others do what I've done, but with real hands-on practical advice, somebody who's physically done it, um, you know, at, at scale um, and at different, you know, different countries, etc. So um, we started off with our consultancy firm, but then we branched into a marketing agency to the franchise industry. Then we branched into a recruitment agency to the franchise industry. Um, property is our next thing, hot off the case for the franchise industry. Um, but it's also um, encouraged me to sit on the board of other franchise or companies and share my experience to help them grow. But it's also then opened another opportunity um, for me to sit on the board of a, a large company who buys um, a quick service restaurant brands, where I've been able to go in, buy shares for, on behalf of this company that I'm involved with, of other brands, and really help them scale up through the vehicle of franchising as well. So it's, you know, franchising has helped me build all of these portfolios around me um, that are servicing the same industry. Um, obviously, the spin off of that is the cash that you generate, you know, and what you then do with that. Um, and people always say, how do you how do you invest that? How do you personally invest that? Well, obviously, in other businesses is one way of doing that. Um, at pensions is another, um, which is really funny. My husband's a financial advisor, and you know, I because I was, you know, putting my money into businesses from a young age, I didn't really have the pension that most people would enjoy. But you know, it's let me ramp that up, which is an important part of my portfolio. Um, dabbling in crypto, which is just a little guilty pleasure on the side, um, and um, you know, the property side of things. So there's lots of different ways that I've now been able to build my portfolios around me. Yeah, excellent. Multiple pillars there that we that we talk about with our members. And I guess the other thing, you know, for a lot of people that are trading time for money in a job or even sometimes within their business, if they haven't systemized it, is, you know, the freedom and the time and being able to choose, you know, how you spend your life and the lifestyle. And you're a busy woman, Susie. I, I can see, you know, all of the things you're doing and, you know, you're winning awards and, you know, multiple businesses there. But, you know, you still are in control right so at the end of the day hopefully you have got a lifestyle that you're choosing there and there's a balance between you know work and play yeah do you know somebody once told me it was my first job when I was 13 and a half 
and I worked in a golf course and then as I got old enough I worked in the bar and I had a boss at this golf course who once told me Susie it's all about people and how right was that man you know you cannot build a business by yourself you need people around you good people around you to build businesses and and that's why you can spread your portfolios and you can spread your business interest if you get those dream teams around you and it's 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 actually a personal passion of mine is building teams that are empowered to to buy into the dream and um, that are incentivized to buy into the dream and that will run with it like it's their own. And that's the secret to, to good business is getting those great people around you that really buy into it. You no. Know? Yeah, couldn't agree more. So Susie, looking forward then um, over the next year or perhaps a little bit longer, what's on the horizon for you and, uh, you know, franchising industry as a whole? Yeah, so franchising is exciting. It's just, you know, for Platinum Wave, it's just, you know, focusing on getting bigger and bigger, bringing on more team members, developing those other revenue streams so that we have this platform company where our clients don't need to step out of our bubble for for any related service um, that we can provide to them. So um, for us personally, very excited about the the months and the years ahead there. Um, In terms of the industry, it's only getting stronger. You know, you're seeing more and more corporates looking at franchising, which is great to see, as well as more smaller companies really starting to recognize franchising. So that's, that's really quite exciting. In terms of my portfolio and you know I've always got my eye out for the next thing that can be franchised and um, that's that's just in my blood unfortunately (laughs) so um, I think that's um, whatever that might be I'm not quite sure. (laughs) Well, We'll we'll definitely look forward to the updates in the future and Susie if someone is interested to find out more what's the next step how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, so we would love to speak to anybody that's interested in just finding out more about franchising in general, whether it's franchising your business or maybe getting into a new industry by investing in a franchise. We run free webinars on both all the time. So just drop us a line at Susie, that's S-U-Z-I-E, at platinumwave.co.uk or check out our website, um, www.platinumwave.co.uk and we're always delighted to have coffees and chats with anybody wanting to learn more about franchising yeah thanks so much for coming on and speaking on wealth talk today Susie. oh thanks for having me eddie welcome to wealth talk good to have you on today hi chris so eddie you've just recently joined as a wealth builders academy member uh great to have you part of the community what was it that uh, that drew you towards us um just looking at uh, ways to obviously build build my wealth and a little bit of legacy obviously for for the children so it was something that um you know, I got exposed to, watched a few podcasts um, and thought, yeah, there's a lot of uh, good value here. So, um, and here I am today. Uh, <laughs> straight <obviously>. straight <laughs> into it. Yeah, there you go. Benefits of being a member, hey? Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Well, it's great to have you on because, you know, we actually did your induction call just a, a week or so back. And, um, you know, it was really fascinating because you oh. have built a, a business out of the franchising model. Yes. And, um, you know, this is perfect timing. So we thought, let's find out more about how you've done it and really hear you know what the reality is like so tell us first and foremost about your business progressive sports what what do you do uh, so here at progressive sports we're all about inspiring and encouraging children to be physically active um, we do that through the engagement that we do with schools uh, prim- primarily working with primary schools so that's anything from you know PE lessons supporting teachers supporting the school with their vision for their school uh, PE and sport um, and everything in between, really. We're just about getting kids active. So we do that, obviously, through the relationship we have with schools. Uh, we're also very active in our community as well. So um, we're currently on the Easter break at the moment. So we've got holiday courses. Uh, we've got weekly classes that we run. Uh, but it's all around that focus of engaging children in being active um, and inspiring them, encouraging them to do that. That That is basically what we what we're all about, what we're all behind. So. Yeah, really, really cool. And how many franchisees do you now have? So we've got uh, 22 franchised territories across the UK. That's covering sort of all the major, major cities. Um, got, you know, quite a good presence in the West Midlands, um, down in parts of London, Manchester, um, Cheshire, down in Bristol. Um, so sort of the major, major cities we've got a presence in. Um, and always actively recruiting. So if any of your listeners are interested. <laughs> yeah. So take us back to the beginning then, Eddie, when it was just you. When was that? And and kind of what inspired you to, to start the whole business at the beginning? 
Yeah, the, the business started back in 2006 and um, my, my journey started pre that was uh, working for organisations, um, doing what I've then obviously set Progressive Sports up to do. So um, I had a bit of experience working with other companies, uh, you know, college, school, sport was my thing, getting getting active. So kind of followed that, that passion um, and turned it into a business and started Progressive Sports back in 2006. We've kind of uh, grown year on year. We've grown with the sector. The sector's matured. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities in what we're doing. Um, you know, schools are a lot more proactive in ways that they can get children active um, and more structured activities are probably provided now than what they were sort of even when we started the business. Um, so, yeah, the journey started back in 2006. And it's purely from a passion perspective. I was following what I was really passionate about uh, and then that has obviously developed and grown over the years into um what is a reasonably successful business so yeah well that isn't that the dream right turning passion into profit so um so at what point then did you start thinking about franchising your business um probably reasonably early on in that journey um we franchised the business or started to look at it in 2009 so Three years into operating the business, we'd kind of doubled the turnover year on year. So we knew that we had a model that was working. I'd already been pre-exposed to franchising as well because uh, I am a franchisee as well as a franchisor. Uh, so those early days, I'd already kind of I was used to how franchising worked. Uh, it was probably subconsciously always in the back of my head. Uh, and I always thought it was a way that we could actually grow the business. Um, obviously, franchising you can get quicker growth um, and obviously we can grow with taking local people with local knowledge local contacts kind of lent itself very well to uh, what we wanted to do and my own growth plans for the business so 2009 straight 2010 uh, but 2010 was the year that we took our our first franchisee on on mm. and and what were the steps that you first took then so how you know how did you go about understanding the process um, I, I engage with a consultant. Um, I, I believe they're still around, Franchise Development Services. Uh, they, they are a franchise business themselves. Um, so I engage the local consultant. Um, I worked with him for probably around about 12 months. Um, so there was a period of obviously getting everything ready, checking obviously the model worked, putting all the systems, processes. Uh, it's a really good exercise to do, even if you do not want to franchise your business because you have to pick apart everything build it back together uh, and be able to obviously put it into a teachable format that somebody can actually follow. Um, all the legality that goes around, obviously, you know, being able to, you know, market it and sell it as a, as a franchise based business. Um, so yeah, and that, that process took around about, about 12 months uh, from mm. start to finish. And, and who is the ideal franchisee now? So who, you know, who's a perfect person if they're listening now that, that would really suit you? Yeah, I mean, fundamentally for us, you know, they, we want people that are passionate about getting children active. You know, for us, that's our big driver. That's our purpose. Uh, so that has to be an underlying, uh, you know, part of their makeup, really, and why they're looking at what we're doing. Um, and then, obviously, alongside that, obviously, we want people who've, uh, you know, willing to put in the hard work that it takes to run a business, not just a franchise business, any kind of business. And we want people with a bit of, entrepreneurial flair as well being able to seek out and spot opportunities um have that hunger and desire and that persistency that's needed to to build a business um uh, but all underpinned by their passion to actually uh you know work in a sector which is about getting children active uh more often which is really what our driver is to be honest yeah and would you say that you know taking on a franchise is is sometimes good for people who don't have so much business background because there's a structure because there's training there's a process you've got the support so yeah. you've kind of got everything you need there to to be successful yeah 100 percent. i think that's one of the big attractions really and why franchising does work um because obviously it does obviously eliminate some risk because obviously the the franchisor and the other franchisees have built up a success, successful, you know, method of how to grow, develop uh, the business. There's obviously those support networks in place, not just from, you know, the head office. You've obviously got the support of, you know, fellow franchisees. Um, so it does it does minimise risk, um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it is is very attractive. 
um, along with lots of other reasons why you know franchising does does work. Yeah. So it's you know been about twelve years now since you you first took on uh, your first franchisee there. Uh, how has it helped you to grow your business, Eddie? You know, what are some of the differences it's made? Yeah, I mean, it, it's taken, um, you know, the kind of growth that we've experienced, it would have taken a lot longer organically. Uh, you know, we got exposure to more schools, getting more children active um, through obviously going down the franchising route, um, less resources, less capital to a degree, um, because obviously certainly, you know, organically grown, you're going to take on a lot of sort of operating costs in terms of people and other costs that are associated with running a business. If you're going to go down that route, obviously franchising, all the day-to-day costs are taken care of by the franchisee. Um, so, yeah, in, in, in that respect, obviously it's worked, worked really well for us um, and it's something that we're still continuing to look at doing as many parts of the country that we don't have a presence in. So we're keen to obviously get into other parts of, of, of the UK and what is a growing sector. Uh, mm. The children's activity sector is, is growing year on year and is, is maturing into uh, you know, a really good space to operate a business. Yeah, and we know for any business owner, it's all about you know managing cash flow, and I guess there's a predictability there because you've got that recurring income stream coming from the franchise fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. There's that that you know the recurring income that comes in from them. So um, obviously, if they're successful, you're successful. So we obviously need to put the right support and training uh, and help in there to make sure that they're they're doing what they need to do to grow their business. Um, you know, it's it's that's incredibly important. But yeah, the, the the margins are very healthy in that part of our business due to the fact of a lot of the day to day costs are obviously taken care of uh, by the franchisees. We can see, you know, gross gross profit would be around about eighty uh, percent, and returning a net profit of around about forty five percent. So, uh, you know, our margins are very very healthy uh, from that respect. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us, Eddie. And obviously, we're looking forward to working with you now so you can start diversifying, you know, outside of the business pillar into some of the other wealth building pillars as well. Yeah, looking forward to it, Chris. All right. Thanks, Eddie. Okay. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks to Susie and to Eddie there for sharing all of their uh, knowledge and experience. We'll dive into some of those wealth lessons in just a moment. Before we do that, heading over to Trustpilot. Thanks to everyone who's left reviews over the last week or two. And I'm going to pull one out from Neil Brown. Neil says, thank you, Wealth Builders. The course, the information, the coaches, all top notch. There is an integrity to the content and the coaches that you just don't find everywhere. And I'm so glad that I've joined. There is clearly still a lot for me to learn in the detail of the various wealth building strategies, but I'm now confident to step forwards in the knowledge that I have access to the education, advice, guidance, and support of a really first class group of people. There you go. How about that? Amazing. Thank you. You know what I love about about this? It's not what people say about us. I mean, that's always nice. And it's reassuring to know that we're on the right track and helping people achieve financial independence. But the word that I look for more than anything else, and that came out in that testimonial there, confident. I feel confident. And when you give people confidence, it means it's going to happen. They feel like it's inevitable they're going to be wealthy. And yet, still, only 95%, well, they don't make it. Only the 5% do. So we've got to keep this mission going, Chris. We've got to keep going to help more people. And by the way, franchising can give you enormous confidence because you're not having to learn all the lessons that business owners often learn. You know, we call them smart business owners here at Wealth Builders. Smart as in... They have to deal with sales and marketing and administration and relationships and team building and on and on and on and on it goes. Whereas if you can think about franchising, either create one or buy into one, either way, depends on which angle you as a listener are coming at it from, it can be a way to build confidence for the future if you're selling or if you're buying, build the confidence that you can just follow the business format do what you're asked to do. They will give you a road to run on. And if you, as long as you don't deviate, like, so, you know, franchise wouldn't work for Kev because I would deviate, wouldn't I? <laughs> I'd go off the tracks. I'd say, no, I could do it better. I could think about it in a different way. But if, you, if you've come from an employed background, you're used to that support, you're used to that environment, business format franchising 
can be a wonderful solution to bridge that gap from being financially insecure to being financially independent. However, word of caution, big word of caution, not every franchise means it's going to work in terms of generating recurring income. So we just need to make that point clear. But it definitely fits into two parts of my three-pin plug. Can you remember my three-pin plug, Chris? Oh, let me see now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) My business three-pin plug that you need to power up your business. The first one... Needs to be in a tight niche. You need to operate in a very well-defined niche. And franchising almost always does that, whether it's food, whether it's a restaurant like uh, Subway or, or, or Wendy's or whatever it would be whether it's a business like uh, Action Coach, say, which is a coaching franchise. And everybody knows I've written a book with Brad Sugars, who's the founder of Action Coach. Now, there's an interesting thing. 10,000 coaches paying him a royalty Mm. every single month. Now, that sounds like a good business for him. Okay. Uh, So as long as it's operating in a niche, that's number one. Remember number two? Needs to work without you. It's to work without you. But if the business that you're buying is a franchise and it's truly documented, all the processes, all the systems, everything is clearly laid out, then it can work without you. And we've got a number of clients who bought franchises, but they don't work in the business anymore. If you think about a McDonald's franchise, you can own a McDonald's franchise or a, a Pizza Hut or a Domino's. You're not going in and flipping the pizzas and spinning the, you know, you're not doing any of this stuff. You're owning something that teenagers can operate. You know, my kids, when they were teenagers, I couldn't get them to clean their room. But now you've got teenagers running businesses, you know, like business format franchising. Yeah. And Brad Sugars, who we had as a guest just a few weeks ago on the podcast, he talked about that, didn't he, with it being an enterprise? You know, you're the business owner. You're the owner of the business. Yeah, not the operator of the business. And the third, which I think sometimes is missing in some franchises... So I'd be cautious about that, which is, does it have the power to create recurring income? Now, it doesn't have to have recurring income always. For example, owning a, we just talked about McDonald's, for example. It's not recurring as in you sell a burger and get paid forever, but you get a lot of repeat traffic. Mm. So, you know, you can be the business owner and it can be very profitable. But still our niche, Wealth Builders niche, is to help people think about a business that will give them an ongoing and recurring income. And some franchises will do that and some don't. But either way, just keep that in mind. Whatever business you're in, you know, can you generate some recurring revenue in that, some kind of automated product, some kind of automated service, some kind of um, gateway to you know, link to other things uh, and so on. But I think the biggest thing, we're noticing about um, membership businesses, Chris, and, and we're working hard on developing that, uh, just so not about franchising, but just about wealth builders, is about community. It's about the fact that we've been so divorced from real community over recent years with everything we know that's going on, that people now craving that feeling of wanting to be connected. And uh, we're very keen to develop that and keen for wealth builders to be seen as a holistic place for people to want to build their wealth with a community of people supporting them. So you can get the support in other ways. Anyway, what did you pick on the franchising idea? Well, you mentioned holistic there. Wealth Builders is, of course, holistic wealth building company. And looking at other pillars and how can that work with perhaps getting into business and one way that we know some of our members have have used before is actually accessing their pensions. So being able to leverage that money that they thought was locked away, access it now, Mm -hmm. and actually allow them to buy a franchise. Yeah, indeed. And we've got a number of clients who've used their pension, uh, which they thought was a part of their past. And we've turned that pension around to face their future and help them in whatever business they're in. But certainly when it comes to franchising, I think as um, was said in the the interview there, that what you've got is an opportunity for banks like it, uh, they like the the sort of solidity, the the fact that most businesses, franchise businesses, have got a propensity to succeed because of the formatting of it. And therefore, similarly, you know, if a business can work in a franchise, you can take security against that and you can either 
take tax-free cash from your pension if you're of a certain age, or you could lend money to your business. Uh, there are many, many ways that your pension can help you uh, create either the franchise business with you wanting to now create franchise or buy into a franchise. So your pension can definitely come to life and help you, which, whichever direction franchising works for you. Yeah, and maybe not just the pension pillar, maybe even home capacity, looking at you know where have you got money in your life, what return are you getting on that money? Can you move it somewhere else and get a better return? Sure, but uh, like like most things, you know, whenever you're moving money from one pillar to another, there's a degree of risk, and you've got to make sure that you're comfortable. And which is why spending time to evaluate the risks in any business, because no business is guaranteed to succeed. Even though franchising has got a greater propensity to succeed, doesn't mean they all do. Uh, you've got to look at your own skills and a good franchising organization will make sure that they explain to you all of those pros and cons and help you determine whether it might be right for you or wrong for you. Yes. Now, there's a great book we both love, uh, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, Mm -hmm. talks about thinking from the end, having the end in mind, you know, working backwards from there. And, uh, you know, purpose of a business is to be able to sell it as you've said before, if Mm -hmm. you wish to. And I like the way that Susie and Eddie actually both talked about the process of actually setting up your business as a franchise forces you to really look at the systems, the processes, the model. And uh, yeah, you know, I find that's interesting, something exercise many business owners are so busy, busy, busy in the business. Mm -hmm. Stepping away and actually looking at that could be a really useful exercise. Yeah, and I think um, Eddie talked about 12 months worth of uh, time he spent with an expert in formatting the business and pulling it apart and reconstituting it in a way that other people could operate and learn from it. Um, And we talked about that, didn't we, just before we came on air and said, that might be an interesting exercise for us to do, to look at it as if we were going to franchise it, because even if you don't, you've got a great business model. So, yeah, that's an interesting one for anybody to think about. Mm. It's lots of food for thought there today. Mm-hmm. And uh, we but, hope- What Subway pizza? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you have tickles your fancy there. So, Meatball uh, marinara, thank you. <laughs> good choice. Um, so, um, that yeah, that concludes today's episode. Um, if you enjoyed that, please let us know. Share the episode with a friend or even head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash reviews. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Put a few words down. We'll definitely give you a shout out on a future episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so thanks again for listening, as always. And uh, Kevin, will catch up same time, same place next Indeed week. Indeed we will. And until then, sir, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.